a beautiful sunrise in Cambodia. This land, however, was once shrouded by one of the most horrifying tragedies of the 20th century. This liberation monument is the symbol of freedom from French domination in 1953. Yet independence became meaningless when later the Cambodians came under a regime that it described as the most cruel of modern times. There are 11.4 million people in Cambodia, and 1 million of them live in Phnom Penh, the capital. Phnom Penh is located at the junction where the Tonsilsa, Basak, and Mekong rivers meet. Here, the river is the most important means of communication. In Cambodia, there are more women than men, as the war against the Khmer Rouge had taken millions of lives. The war in the last decade had hindered the development of Cambodia. It then became one of the poorest countries in the world. Goods are still delivered on horseback and people work as hard as they can to earn a living. In the first century, districts in southern Cambodia and southern Vietnam were under the governance of the Champa Malay Kingdom. The Siamese conquered them in 1296 and Vietnam captured the districts at the Mekong River mouth in 1471. The attacks on the Champa Malays by the Vietnamese in 1721 drove them into the Cambodian interior. They came to the junction of Mekong and Tonal Sap rivers. There are 13 Champa Muslim Malay villages along this river. One such village is Kampong Kerbao. There are about 500 Muslims here. Only 3% of the 11.4 million Cambodians are Muslims. The Dar es Salaam Mosque was built in 1937. When the Khmer Rouge was in power in Cambodia, all buildings of worship were destroyed. Fortunately, this piece of history is still intact. It is part of a larger mosque that was not destroyed during the atrocities between 1975 and 1979. There was no religious activities in the mosque during the Pol Pot rule. Anybody found practicing any type of religion was prosecuted. The Muslims here were able to protect their faith. This they owe to the traditional education system known as the Pondok system. It is a system adopted from Patani, Thailand and Kelantan, Malaysia. Education then was carried out secretly. The Pondok is situated along the Mekong River. Many Muslims were murdered here when the Khmer Rouge suspected them of teaching Islam. Zakaria bin Yusuf was seven years old at the time. Now he is a student at the religious school. He still remembers the calamity at the village and how his family had to flee for their safety. With peace, Islam is revived. 
the sounds of people reciting the Holy Quran is heard again. Hafsa binti Muhyiddin, 19, was born during the Pol Pot regime. Her mother was spared from execution, but her father was lost without a trace until today. Most of the people here have their own share of sad and horrific stories to tell. The war has ended and people are grateful for the peace of today. The Islamic education has been revived. Hafsa has been studying here since the end of the Pulp Watt regime. A year ago, she completed her fourth year at the secondary level. Now she is part of the teaching staff. Cambodia took a very long time to recover from the effects of the war. Three decades of wealth was destroyed, and today the Muslims are building a better future through education. This tower is a memorial for the Sui Kliang villagers, who retaliated against the Pol Pot regime at the end of 1975. The regime had ordered them to cease praying and fasting in the month of Ramadan. Women were ordered to shorten their hair. 1,200 Muslims decided to fight the fully armed Pol Pot soldiers. Nearly all of the Muslims died. The Khmer Rouge era from 1975 to 1979 brought about three major problems to Cambodia. Poverty, illiteracy and disease, all hard to eradicate. Also, many women became widows and were forced to become the sole breadwinners in the family. This is the new generation of Muslims in Pol Pot village. These children were born in the transition period between the times of calamity and peace. They are still too young to understand the sufferings their mothers had to go through. Eight million people suffered at the hands of the Pol Pot regime between 1975 and 1979. In these two districts of Kampong Cham province, 40,000 Champa Muslims were killed mercilessly. The horrifying history was retold to serve as a reminder of the bitter past. Cambodia used to be an exporter of rice. However, the war had reduced the country's rice output drastically. Today, Cambodia has become one of major rice importers of this region. A population boom may have also contributed to that. In 1975, Cambodia's population was 8 million. Now, it has reached 11.4 million. 90% of them live in rural areas and work on paddy fields.
The war had forced most of the people to the interior, and some had chosen to be cut off from the outside world. One such group is the Friday people. Although they still claim to be Muslims, they are very far away from Islam. Since they alienated themselves from the outside world, they have not been able to learn the true teachings of Islam from qualified Muslim scholars. Even with these shortcomings, they wanted to go on reciting the Quran, so they recited it in their local dialect. Their usual attire consists of white clothes and turban. They also shave their heads bald and are known as the Zahids. They only perform the prayers once a week on Fridays, thus the name the Friday people. According to their explanation of Mufti Kamaruddin, this has been their way of practicing the religion for generations. In fact, everything is referred to an old book their ancestors created. It was written in the Cham language. Due to their poor command in the Arabic language, they translated the sounds from the Quran into a language they understood. The Jumnik village, on the other hand, is an example of a Muslim settlement. 6,000 of the 250,000 Cambodian Muslims live here. Most of them are fishermen and farmers. During the Pol Pot regime, 2,000 people from Jumnik were murdered. The tragedy had brought them closer to each other. Only today do they have the opportunity to improve their understanding of Islam. The mosques are always filled with worshippers. Mufti Kamaruddin guides the regularly held religious classes. Local scholars hold a huge responsibility to rebuild the faith of the Muslims of this shattered nation. The Mekong River has been the main mode of communication in Indochina. It starts in China, running across Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia, and finally ending here in Vietnam. This ferry carries passengers across the borders of Cambodia and Vietnam. Cambodia is the area at the junction of the Mekong and the Tonsil South rivers, while the Mekong River is in Vietnam. Long ago, the stretch along the Mekong River was under the Malay Champa rule. Islam was widely embraced when the king converted to the religion in 1607. In 1720, Vietnam defeated the Champas and the people escaped south and settled in an area along the Mekong River stretching to the Tonsil Sap Lake. At the moment, there are only 100,000 Muslims as compared to Vietnam's total population of 76 million. Most of them live here in the Chow Deck at the Mekong Riverbank. At the tributary of the river lies one of the 13 Muslim villages. The Nikma Mosque is one of the 11 mosques in Tan Chao. It was built in 1930. There are 370 Muslim families who live here. In 1992, the Vietnamese government allowed its people to practice their respective religions freely. This encouraging development led them to improve their knowledge of Islam. They adopted the Islamic school system of Kelantan, Malaysia. The only difference is that the language used is Vietnamese. Because of education, the Champa Malays have close ties with the Kelantanese in Malaysia. 88-year-old Hakim Haji Idris Sulaiman used to study in Kelantan in 1930, before he went to Mecca to further his studies. This is an old edition of the Holy Quran. 
An ancestor of the owner brought it back from Tongano, Malaysia 300 years ago. The footnote reads, this is the Holy Quran brought in from Tongano. Tok Ahmad and his relatives, Zainul Abidin, brought it here in 1135 Hijra or 1715 Miladiya. Two of the owner's ancestors were the earliest religious heads in the southern province of Vietnam. Mufti Haji Ismail Fikri, 87, can still speak the Malay language fluently. He is one of the founders of Islamic schools in Vietnam. He studied in Kelantan for 10 years when he was 15 years of age. He still keeps some of the photographs taken decades ago. Upon coming back to Vietnam, he was elected the Vice Mufti. Mubarak Mosque, the first mosque in Chaotiang. Chaotiang is the earliest settlement of the migrants from the peninsular Malaysia, Java and Sumatra 300 years ago. It was founded in 1750 after the fall of the Champa Malay Kingdom to Vietnam. Originally constructed with bamboo, this majestic mosque was rebuilt through funds donated by the Indochina Muslim Association based in the United States. In 1965, the Malaysian government provided funds for the addition of the new wing. Mufti Ismail Fikri is the founder of the Madrasa Jumadul Islam. It was built to keep alive Islamic education in Vietnam. The Islamic educational institutions in Vietnam are initiated and supported by the 100,000 local Muslims. Thus resources are always limited. Not all the Champa Malays migrated to the Malay Peninsula after Vietnam took over 300 years ago. Some chose to stay on. They depended on fishing and farming for their livelihood. The Champa Malay women are famed for their weaving talents. It is believed that the art of weaving in the Southeast Asian region originated here in Champa Malay areas. The war made their lives all the more difficult and everybody had to work to supplement their household income. The Ho Chi Minh Memorial. It was built as a symbol of the communist triumph over American domination. A war that lasted three decades. Since the war ended in 1975, peace has returned to this land. Vietnam is enjoying the harmony by reconstructing the country after the destruction of the war. The Muslims are also rebuilding their lives to combat poverty and illiteracy. They have a long way to go on this long road to total recovery.
Astam.